Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Ms. Casper. Let me recognize in a very special way this afternoon, His Excellency, the President, Mr. Charles A. Savran, and Mrs. Savran. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Carrot, Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Foreign Affairs, and Information Technology. Mrs. Gloria Schillingford, the Minister for Social Services, Community Development, and Gender Affairs. Father Elvio, our parish priest. Mrs. Jacqueline Roberts, Justice of the Peace. The large team of cabinet colleagues who are here this afternoon. Welcome, gentlemen, to Casa Bruce. Let me also recognize in a very special way the other invited guests we have here, in particular, Ms. Lauren Banis Roberts, as recognized here this afternoon. <laughs> Let me also recognize head of the Drug Prevention Unit, Ms. Jacinta Banis. <laughs> Let me recognize in a very special way the members of the health team who are here with us. It's good to have our health team with us. Our elected councillors, welcome. Other invited guests, people of Casabros, good afternoon. Now it's always a joy to be with you in everything. So I am so happy to be with you this afternoon to address you at this very special occasion. I want to first of all congratulate the council, in particular the councillors whom you, the people of Casabros, retained for another term, handsomely. This clearly demonstrated your satisfaction with the work they have been doing in moving Casabros to the next level. I want to also recognize in a very special way the new councillors um, who have come on board, but I want to give special recognition to the two young men we have on the councils this afternoon. Let's put our hands together for them. In particular, in particular, Mr. Franklin Mingo from, Guru, from Dipa. Mr. Mingo registered to vote for the first time. As soon as his name showed up, he went to the council, registered for the village council election, voted for the first time, and almost stopped the polls. <laughs> so Mr. Mingo, I welcome you to the council. You are now responsible for the entire deeper community at your young age. I'll tell you something. A guy came to me yesterday. He said to me, we need a road to go on the bay side. He said, but there's a new guy in charge of the panel. Mr. Mingo, just go to him. <laughs> so Mr. Mingo, they are already putting heavy responsibility on you. But I promise you, the government and I, pal rep, with the council, we will continue to work for the advancement of, of DIPA. We've done a lot of work in DIPA. We're so happy about that in housing, in roads, and in the bathroom facilities. So DIPA is getting its fair share of the development that comes into the Casablus area. And welcome. My dear people, we are here to celebrate the inauguration of our council, to celebrate the achievement we have made in Casablus as a people, and to forge ahead without looking back. Casablus is ours, and we all have a part to play in, in its development. It was happening to hear the chair lady mention a number of projects that the council implemented over the past three years. And any time she speaks of three years, she's speaking of my tenure, because I've only been here for four years. So therefore, I am so happy that through the government system in particular, with the support of the Prime Minister and all the ministries, we've been able to make monies available because we have confidence in the Casablanca Village Council to implement the projects that we want to implement in this community. And therefore, therefore, the Prime Minister makes the funds available. I take it to the council, and the council implements 
and supervise the project. That's why they were re-elected. So thank you very much, um, uh, Madam Chair, for the wonderful job you're doing in implementing the projects that um, are coming to, to, um, to Casabrus. And sometimes we hear people say, um, nothing is happening. My dear people, we cannot do everything at the same time. But we have to prioritize and implement the most important projects with the limited amount of resources that we have. Yes. I make no apology for the amount of money that we have had to spend from DIPA to Pedisufwe. Because you know I have said to you in the town halls that these places, we've been pounded by natural disasters and we could not leave these areas in the state they were in. And for those of us who were at the inauguration in, in um, San Sove, you would have heard of the amount of projects we had to undertake, disaster mitigating projects, walls, retaining walls, road pavements, you just name it, and we had to do it. Because Marietta will tell you, after the disaster of 2012, everybody wanted to run out of San Sove, good up, deep and pay the Sove. But we had to take the bull by the horn and do what we had to do to make our people safe in these areas. And of course, while we were doing this, with the limited resources that we have, we could not give customers equal amount of financial attention. Not that we were not serving you, but we could not give you equal amount of financial attention. But we're happy that we can say today that we constructed the Fomi Bridge as a priority. Because when I remember seeing the number of farmers having to carry their planting across that ravine, and when you see Mazenfa, uh, a 90 pound planted on her head crossing that bridge to bring on the other side for the truck, that cannot continue. So the Fomi Bridge became a priority for the farmers because that's where they're making their living. And we constru constructed the Fomi Bridge to the tune of $150,000. When we look at the Casper Secondary School, we spend $316,000 in renovating the Casper's Primary School because it is our premier learning institution in this area. And you know what was important? It was given a, a, look, a young contractor who won, won the bid. And it was his first major contract. And he employed over 45 young people from the village in working at the Casper's um, Secondary School. At the Casper's Primary School, the toilet facility was constructed since in the inception of the school. And therefore, it was becoming a major problem for us. And we had four young contractors bidding again for that project. It was given to another young contractor, and that was his first project as a contractor. Well over $200,000. And they did this remarkable job in transforming the toilet facilities down here. And they did the, the construction of the facility for our uh, um, early learning center for preschools. These were priority project. When the, the school called me once, and that was before Chicken Gonia, and the school said to me, we have a situation where if we do not do a box crossing right there, mosquitoes will invade our school. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Roberts, they were already invading. And we were lucky that we did this project of well over $50,000 before Chicken Gonia because it would have been blamed for chicken going and gas roast. <laughs> but we had to spend $50,000 just to do that crossing to protect our children at our school. And it continues. We had to spend, again, another $250,000 for the dredging of the Casabas River. I remember um, in 2013, when we had a major flood, and we reported the number of calls we lost. I mean, some people exaggerated the number because some people told me they lose 13 and 15 and 20 and so on. However, we had to do something about the dredging of the river. And thanks to the Ministry of Public Works, we spent $250,000 dredging the Casabas River to protect our farms and our farmers. Now, our farmers now must move ahead and make use of the land. Because when we invest all of this money and put in the irrigation, you have to take the bull by the horn and make use of your land. Because we are investing to protect your farms for you. So when we speak about projects in Casabras, a lot of projects has been done. And I got tongued for the Jalousy Road. I told you the Jalousy Road will be done. But just bear with Pal Rep Jono. Let him get some major projects of the way in, um, in, in the San Sobe area. And we have spent to date 
$450,000 on the Chalice Road. And we're not going to stop. There's a last phase, which is from the junction to the main road in Wakama. Yeah. We will do that. Yeah. But for now, my dear people of Jalousy, strong supporters of Johnson Drago, you have an excellent road to drive on. Yeah. And let nobody tell you nothing is happening for you. Because this has been done for you, for your comfort and safety. Yeah. We got $250,000 for sanitation. Castle has got seven toilet facilities. But we ensured that four was done apart from the seven in the bar. Because we're not leaving the bar out. The bar is part, an integral part of Castle Bruce. So anything we get for Castle Bruce is for Castle Bruce and the bar. So the persons in the bar, they are so happy with their facilities right now. I went to the lady home, she said, Jono, money for poor bathroom, poor and the top. That's why I was elected to ensure that. More of you will not be taking battle to go to your toilet very soon. Because as we speak, the Prime Minister has committed $200,000 for Casabros and Depa for the continuation of the bathroom facility. And these funds will go to the Casabros Village Council for implementation in the traditional way of managing the country's finances. I have said before, when I came into office, education was my priority because I was not satisfied that our people are preparing themselves to take advantage of the opportunity in education. And ladies and gentlemen, I have said it in sense of I'm saying it here. My footprint is in the Ministry of Education, fighting for you, the people of Casabros, in education. As we speak, in Casabros alone, there are 33 students at the Dominica State College. And I twist the minister's hand. I said, Mr. Minister, it was a Friday. I need a letter to take to the college to say that the Ministry of Education and the government of Dominica will be responsible for every child of the Casabros constituency who comes to the college and is unable to pay their fees. Minister said to me, wait for Monday. I said, no, we can't wait for Monday because <laughs> the, the, um, the, the gentleman in charge of the college, Dr. Peters, had already made a proclamation that when you come in, come with a certain amount of money. And there were persons from Casabros who wanted to attend college, especially coming from bright families, poor, poor families, but the children are bright. Johnson not going to make them fall apart. And I said to the minister, I need that letter today. And the minister took his pen, prepared a letter, and signed it. And I went straight to the bursar at the college. And I said, bursar, as of this moment, any child who comes from the Casabros constituency, add them to that list. And the Prime Minister and I, we are in private discussion because we want to see what we can do to assist some of them in transportation. But that's not ready yet. But we're hoping that we can insink something to help our children in transportation. This is why I was elected. And I will not belong. I will not belong, but there are a few things I must say. Because there are some people in this community who have done nothing for the community but for themselves. And they are driving around every corner making noise disturbing us all night and saying Johnson Drago is doing nothing when they themselves has done nothing for this village. It is my duty to stop them. I will ensure that we do not impose anybody on us going forward. And I will continue to work for you, my dear people, because that's why you elected me. And so, this year, this year, my dear people, I hired three Muslim trees to make uniforms. Are you aware of that? I told every child from Casabros with difficulty in getting a uniform, just go to JJ. Just go by JJ and take your, your measurements. And then go by Oshin and take your measurements. We, we hired a new swimsuit in Peter Sufuye because the workload for JJ was too much and we didn't want all of the students having to come to Casabros. So we employed somebody in Peter Sufuye to make uniforms. And we still employ my friend in Lipa, um, Alicia, to make uniforms for us for um, getting our children to school. Because we want to ensure that our children are at school. And don't forget, the bus that carried children from Deepa to Casabros was hired by Johnson Drago to get our children to school. Because delinquency students, students was rampant in, 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 in the Deepa area. And today, every day, we have our bus taking our children from Deepa. We have some challenges. We will deal with it. I have spoken to the Ministry of Education, and I told the, the, um, the officials, 
meet with the bus driver, prepare a contract for him. When his contract is prepared, send a copy to the EO and the principal, and then we will call all the parents of Deepa with the bus driver and the principal and the education officer, and we'll have a meeting and we'll say to him, these are your time for taking our children from Deepa to school on Mondays, and these are your times from Tuesday to Friday, and he will have to stick to his agreement. Yeah. So I'm working on that situation that we have in Deepa, because this is why you elect me. And so the uniform is not all, the books continue. This year we were able to assist a number of poor parents with the whole question of um, shoes. This year, I'm, I'm to, to, to go to school. So my job is not to be distracted. Don't be afraid of all the noise I'm hearing around me. Don't be afraid. It's a political campaign and there must be noise. In the meantime, please remain steadfast because I am part of a government that has every Dominican at heart. And I am working tirelessly for you. I will not get everything you ask. Trust me on that. And there are times when you will be disappointed because I failed to deliver something. But that's the process of things. But there is nobody in the government system who leaves their office every time he's in tongue. And this is a money there for two days. And I will work with my constituents to meet the officer of the state that they need to see because I do not want nobody to waste my people's time when the patron does come to Rosu. So they come to me and I go to the office and I enter the office and I meet the officer and I say, this is somebody from Gouda, from Casabrus. They are here for this, that, that. Tell me what you're going to do for them. Because they are, they are a likelihood they will put in line and they will turn come back the next day and come back the other day. I don't want that to happen to my constituents. And I am ensuring that this does not happen. I just shocked the PM a while ago when I told him, and let me tell you something, you know people still calling me and telling me we're not getting nothing out of the NEP. People call me and say that to me. But anyway, call me and tell me everything. Having said that, as we speak, we have 96 persons of this constituency employed under the National Employment Program. The, all the staff of the roving caregivers. The young guys who are doing the brush cutting, who are cutting all the grass for us all over the place. The ministry gave 56 paces for our hospitality program, and Mr. Honorable Peter Session, please don't listen to this one. 56 spaces for the um, hospitality program under the NEP. Do you know that? It's for Antrizel to Delis. So it includes Grand Form, Monjon, River Civic, and so on. By the time we got to the opening ceremony in Pokasi, I had already filled in 25 spaces out of the 56. That's because of my aggressiveness in going and looking for things my people. So my minister said to me, Draco, where all these people come from? <laughs> this is why I was elected, to represent you. And that's what I am doing. And you will not see everything I'm doing openly. So in, in, in saying this, my dear people, we have to continue to push for each other. We have to continue to work for each other. I was told that I was criticized for assisting people in, um, during bereavement. They said, don't worry for him. All he wants is when somebody die, find himself there. Yeah. Take it easy. <laughs> this is why I was elected. I lost my mother and my brother in the space of two and a half years. All you remember that? Yeah. Mommy died, and within a year, Magdo fell from a tree and he died. Yeah. I understand the pain of grief. Yeah. So when somebody dies, whether they are labor, freedom, united workers, or nothing at all. It is my duty to sympathize with them. And every member of my community deserves the dignity of a proper burial. And whatever I have to do to ensure that this happens, I will do it. And so as it turned out, nowadays, anytime the person die and they have nothing, they just call him and give me the body away. So no problem. You remember when, when Calab died? They just tell me you know Calab died, and Calab was mine. And I took charge of Calaf and ensured that Calaf got a dignified burial. So that's not a problem. That's what a part of us has to do.
That's why I was elected. And that's why, with your help, I will be re-elected. And so, my dear, I have a lot of things to see. But let's still leave some for the platform. Because you haven't heard from me on the platform, you know. I just said a few things. But we are coming on the platform. But I have one more thing I must say to you before we close this afternoon. Now, during the council elections, the, you know, traditionally, when we have council elections, which I have taught the poll three times, and for those who do not know, I have taught the poll three times, so I have a vivid understanding of council election. I know how to win the thing. So, traditionally in Casabros, when council election comes, we meet together, we put up a, a mic some them and all the candidates speak together. They go about campaigning together. All of a sudden this year, I'm hearing, this is our five. All of a sudden, for the first time in our council election, somebody decided to infuse central government politics, party politics, into the council elections. And they presented a five and said, this is our five. Look, the five, that's the five I'm giving you. Let us throw them out. That doesn't happen in local government elections. Because local government election is a family thing. The person might be voting for the Labour Party, but is their brother going up as a councillor? So nobody can say to them, don't vote for them, and, and they have five votes. So therefore, I want you to put your hands to yourselves for rejecting that idea of party politics in, in, um, um, in the council elections. We are not going to tolerate that in class of rules. And then we're going to throw them out. Do you know that? The campaign was to ensure that the chair lady doesn't get not one vote. Let's ensure that she doesn't get not one vote. The lady's working so hard. After the last disaster we had, when PM said everybody home have tea, I left my home in the traditional way to go out to see how many people spend the night. So I'm trying to call Fia. Let me say Fia. To say to Fia, Fia. I have already left home, you know, I'm going out. Can I pick you up for us to go out and see what happened to our people? Although it was not a big storm. Do you know that when I call Miss Gaspar, she tell me, you know, I'm already in three corners. She was already in three corners. She had left her home because she wanted to know how the elderly persons fell out last night. This, are, this is why you vote for a council chairperson. And this is why she was elected. And so we stayed out for 16 and a half hours visiting people because I had to cover the entire constituency. But for sure, you want to touch as much people as you can on that day. And this is the confidence that Johnson Drago have in his chair of his council, Angelica Gaspar. Nobody could prevent anybody from voting for her to say that she should not get the one vote. And so I want to thank you, my dear people, for turning out in such large numbers to vote on polling day. We have work to do, but I need you to be more involved in the life of the community. Sixteen's name, came up for the council election. But I'll tell you one thing. About two months before, Miss Gasper called a meeting to discuss chicken going, I think it was, with the doctor. It was only the councillors and Miss Gasper here. Not even one of the persons who said to us that their community leaders showed up. But within a month, there was 12 other persons who wanted to be, they, they, all of a sudden they become community leaders and they're ready to, to lead. But they could not show up, not even for a community meeting. If you want to be a councillor, you must demonstrate in advance that you are committed to community development. You must have a track, develop a track record of serving people. You can't just show up. It's not a brat where people are, I'm, 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 who, who come can eat, who, get, who come will get. So, so therefore, People will continue to vote for persons who are demonstrating leadership. So I said to you in conclusion, my people, Casper is was to build. I am as strong as a lion and ready to represent you. I go to bed every night at, after midnight, not for a show. That's because when my day is finished meeting people, I have to do my little write-up on everything I have to write. So therefore, I have to read what I have to read. So therefore, I spend the remaining hours doing that. But I pray a lot, and God has been good to me, and I thank God for what he's doing for me. I say to you, I say to you, I'm not going nowhere, and I am not, I have not just arrived. I am 47, full of life, and my commitment to you is resolute. One of the good days, 
You will be called, again, called upon again to go to the polls. I am looking for your support to ensure that I continue the work that I have started in this constituency. My job is to ensure that persons who have never contributed before and who are still not contributing, I, my job is to ensure that these persons stay out of the political life of Casibus. They will make a contribution in other ways, no problem, but they will stay out of the political life of the community because if you want to lead us here, you must have a track record of service. And this is what I have done before. This is what I will continue to do. And finally, do not look for, I have been told that a historic speech was delivered in Casabros. Do not expect to get a, re a replica of my speech today, no way. Don't go looking for it online or anywhere, because you will not get it. Because this is my words coming from my heart to your heart, demonstrating my love for you as your parent. So let us go. Let's continue to do our work as a people. Every one of us have a role to play. My love for you is unconditional and you know that. We have a community to build. We have a nation to protect. And we'll be voting soon to protect this nation. And we will be doing it together. I know some of you are saying, may tell you may take my summer happy. Take it easy. Everybody cannot get everything at the same time. But my commitment to representing you, nobody can stop it. So forward we go. Let us keep Cassibus alive. Cassibus is the mecca of so many things. But I just need more people to play their part. There are too many people sitting on the wayside and just talking and hoping to come in office. It's not going to happen that way. It can't happen that way. Let us move our community forward. Let me thank the Prime Minister for all the funds he has made available for projects from Cassibus to Pini And for the funds he'll continue to make available as we move Cassibus to Pini forward. This afternoon, this afternoon, we will sign the contract for the Sen House Road, my Sen House people. And, and, and secondly, this afternoon, my dear people, today, I want you to know the persons who've been waiting patiently for the Petro Casa. They won't be Petro Casas anymore because, um, as it turned out, the Casa's leg of the Petro Casa were the last set to be constructed. The material, the plastic materials, got a bit com compromised, and they tried to salvage them, but it was not possible. Having done the, the platforms for the Petro Casa houses. So we had to go back to the drawing board. Designs were made, estimates were made. They were, had to be approved by planning, come to cabinet, we had to look at it. There was a little back and forth because of everything we have to take into place in, into consideration. But I can say to you tonight, my dear people waiting for the Petro Casas, that the Minister of Finance has made all the funds available for the completion of the Petro Casa houses. Well over $750,000. So you will see work. We're going to employ five local contractors to build 10 houses at the back there. We'll do it fast. So you will soon be getting your houses and you will soon be into your houses. I am bringing additional funds for the council coming from the Ministry of Constitutional Empowerment, um, Mr. Ambrose George. Our checks did not make it they stayed at an office, but for sure, the council will be getting the checks. We want to fix all the bathroom facilities um, done by the playing field. We want to fix the lights because the, the lights were placed by Honorable Banis years ago. So we want to fix the lights on the court for, night, for the night activities, among other things that we're going to do. And we together will move our community forward. So thank you very much, people of Casablas, for your support. Thank you for holding on with me. And let us move Casablas forward together. Thank you very much.